to go to class and try to make sure we need a high school decline. I don't know why I just said it like that. Anyway. Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. Well, it's a sort of a mini episode, really. I'm sure some of you will recognise this kind of setup. It's a Tesla coil. But I thought I would investigate using vacuum tubes. Yes. Well, one tube or valve or whatever you want to call it. I wanted to see if I could get any sort of output using one of these low power tubes or low power valves and after a lot of tinkering I actually do get something. Now I'm going to turn the lights out. The output isn't amazing or anything like that. We can't really expect that from this little tiny valve like that. But it does actually do something, and so I'm just going to plug it in. And I have a look on the scope. Should have, should see a waveform appearing any minute. Here it comes. I've got the scope. I'm measuring the output with a. Just a piece of wire here connected to the scopes that's acting like an antenna picking up the output of the Tesla coil. And this does actually work. I don't know if you can see it on the camera. So I'm just trying to get the camera's angle a little bit better. Of course it's all on the skew now. But there is a tiny, teeny, weeny little bit of plasma coming out the end of that wire. Okay, you can sort of see it now. If I unplug it, you can see the little thing disappears. I'll just plug that back in. So I can draw an arc of it. not really showing up very well on the camera because the camera's trying to compensate for the low light by adjusting the shutter speed and everything. There's not much I can do about that. Yeah, but I can get a little arc off that. Of course, I don't actually know if this is interfering with the microphone, so I might just be yapping here without you even hearing what I said and my antenna wire's about to fall down. I'm not sure why the camera can't see the little bit of plasma on the end. Maybe if I just move that up a bit. So I don't want to touch the wire and zap myself on it. Can even do the old Slayer Exciter thing with the wireless energy transfer. That's just holding this fluorescent light near it makes it light up. Can you see that? It's crazy, isn't it? Absolutely mad. Actually, um, let me move the camera up a bit so we can see that this tube is not connected to anything. See, it's just, there's no wires anywhere. So no tricks here. That is lighting up when I put it near this coil. It's voodoo magic. So yeah, anyway, I'll just talk through the construction I've got here. This is probably the simplest test the coil that I have ever made. All it is, we've got transformer here, valve there, a few capacitors connected across the primary coil, there's primary, secondary and uh, there's a feedback coil in the middle. Now I better just turn this off so I don't electrocute myself when I take this apart so you can see what's actually in here. 
Oh, and there's no rectification as well. The whole circuit's working on AC. So anyway, this is the secondary. Surprisingly, actually, it's a little bit warm right there, I don't know why. The rest of it's cold, but that's weird. Now we can move this out the way. And there's my feedback coil. And the primary. And that's it. And I'll just put this back together and run it again. And um, I think that'll do it for this video. So I'll stick that in there. connect up the other end of the, my primary to the ground. I think I'm obscuring the camera, aren't I? Sorry about that. Was I obscuring the camera? I'll have to... I don't know, because my computer's behind me. I am getting in the way, aren't I? I found it seems to run best if I have the primary about there. Let's turn the lights down. And power it up one more time. Just in case you're interested in the power up process. Here it comes. little bit of valve high voltage. Anyway, if I do get any more powerful tubes than um, or valves rather than this little one I've got here, I'll make a much more powerful version of this.